what's up guys, Eddie Martinez here with The Recording Connection and welcome to your additional supplemental video for lesson number three, sample rates and bit depth. Go ahead and grab a pen and paper so we can get started. Alright guys, so let's just remember in our last video we covered plenty of details about bit depth and sample rates, so this is just going to be a quick review and some more useful information. So in order to record and edit sounds in computers, those sounds actually need to be digitized. This means it needs to be broken up into zeros and ones that make up the binary language of computers. Now sound actually works very similarly to film. Movies consist of a series of individual still pictures taken together around 30 frames per second to create a continuous image. Digitized audio consists of a series of snapshots of sound that are placed together continuously to reproduce a recorded sound. Let's go ahead and talk about sample rates. How often these audio snapshots are taken is referred to the sample rate. The more snapshots taken, the more detail the sound has. Now in the world of digital audio, the most common sampling rates are 44.1 kHz and 48 kHz. Although sampling rates of 96 kHz and 192 kHz are beginning to become the new standard. Now there's a small downfall in recording in higher sampling rates. 192 kHz will actually eat up four times as much disk space as the same sound sampled at 48 kHz. Now let's go ahead and go over bit depth. Now, bit depth also determines the quality of sound you end up with. Bit depth defines the dynamic range of the sound or amplitude of the waveform. 8-bit audio gives you 256 separate levels for each sample. 16-bit audio gives you 65,536 levels for each sample. And 24-bit audio gives you 16.7 million different levels. When you're recording, it's usually a good idea to record at the highest bit depth and sample rate possible. You can always downsample your CD master. The more data you start out with, the better your final mix will sound. Plus, in the future, you'll be able to remix your stuff without losing too much noticeable quality. All right, guys, that's all the information that I have for you today. But of course, it's up to you to put this knowledge to use. Now, don't forget to jump back into your Recording Connection workbook and just double check to see if you have any mandatory supplemental reading assignments to turn in for this week. Now, if you feel shaky on any of this material, what you need to do is go back into your provided textbook and reread that material. Just remember that these videos are only a supplement to your education. Okay? Now, if you're watching this video online and you want to know more about the recording process uh, and you want to learn how to become a recording engineer in just six months, what you need to do is you need to check out the recordingconnection.com or call the provided number. Our staff is actually going to set you up with an engineer in your town or in a town near you. We have tons of locations all across the U.S. and parts of Canada, and we're actually really proud to say that we have more than a 72% hiring success rate thanks to our student advisor that comes with your enrollment. So I hope you guys all enjoyed the video, and I'll catch you guys a little bit later.